song and think about who Jesus is. Because who's, who Jesus is, is a very important question. In the gospel reading today, we had that, um, that question when Jesus asked his disciples. Remember that one? That's the one they read third. Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? Okay, important question. Who do people say that I am? So what was he asking there? He, he was asking, what's the perception out there of him? Now, he wasn't asking whether they knew his name, you know, Jesus of Nazareth, whether they knew his identity. That wasn't the question. The question was more about, more about purpose. Like, what did he do? What, he, what was he capable of? What was, what was his, uh, um, you know, what was his role on this earth? Because <clears throat> we see that um, Simon, uh, they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. So, you know, some thought he was John the Baptist, or John the Baptist had just been so they're getting a bit confused with with uh, you know who they were seeing talking um, some say Elijah well if they're saying Elijah well that's because you know they were they were thinking that Elijah had returned from the dead and they were seeing him again is that a bit loud for you yeah doing a sound check with you there how's that is that better for you yeah excellent good i was just thinking that you know when you see people go ah you know you sort of think maybe it's a smig loud um okay so um they were thinking that now, now legend had it that elijah would return so even saying that Jesus is Elijah, they were saying there's something special about this guy, but they hadn't quite nailed it down who he was and what was so special about him. So, uh, and then Simon Peter said, well, then Jesus asked that question, but, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? And that's the important question. Who do you say that I am? Now, Peter said, you are the... You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Messiah. So that was, and that's the answer that Jesus was looking for. And he said, well done. You know, God has revealed this to you. Now keep it quiet. It's not the time yet for people to know this. So this is a question I want to look at today. This important question that Jesus asked his disciples. Who do people say that I am? And who do you say that I am? See, the question is still going on today, isn't it? There are people who have questions about the identity of Jesus. They have questions about who Jesus is. You may have heard some of those questions before. You know, you may have heard some of those questions around the place with people having opinions about who Jesus is. You know, they might say, he's a good teacher. You know, Jesus was a great philosopher. Um, he had some wonderful ideas for life. You, you've probably heard of those kinds of things. Uh, you may even think some of those things yourself. You know, you may, may even have some opinions about Jesus yourself, about who Jesus is. You know, he's a good bloke or, um, you know, amazing teacher or something, had a few tricks up his sleeve. It's really important that we come to some kind of decision about Jesus because who Jesus is is really important for how we live our lives and how long that lasts. You see, the question about Jesus was a functional one. It wasn't where he came from or, or you know, what was on his driver's license and things like that. You know, they might have donkey driver's license, I don't know. But it um, wasn't about 
his paperwork or anything like that. It was functional. See, when Peter says, you're the Christ, you're the Messiah, you're the son of the living God, that was, that was like a title. That was very functional. Because who we think Jesus is is closely related to what we think he can do, what we think he's capable of. And it's what, what he's capable of that's most important. See, um, who I am was really important for some people that I came across the other day. Uh, not that I'm Rob Edwards or pastor or anything like that. They, they didn't care about that. But it's what I could do that was important. See, I'll, I'll tell you a little story. I was running along, going for my jog, which I need to do from time to time just to feel sane. So I'm going for a run and, uh, and on my track, there's n it's not a circle, right? I have to go out, down the road a bit, roundabout, then come back on the same track. And again, I know it's a little bit boring, but this is my track. And on the way, I saw this car alongside of the road. Okay? They seem to have a flat tyre. So I'm running along. Have a quick look. Yep, there's a guy... There was an older couple, right? They got grey hair and, you know, obviously retired or, you know, on holidays or something. Older couple, old bloke, old lady. She's sitting in the car. Maybe she had some mobility issues or something because I, I, I never saw her get out of the car. So she stayed in the car and there was a younger bloke, really young, like 40 or something. He was this young fella. He was with them. And he was getting a spare tyre out of the boot. And so I'm running past, have a quick look. Everything looks like it should, right? Flat tyre, sad. Spare tyre, good. It was a space saver. You know those space saver tyres? Talk about useless. You, you know, you, it was a fairly fancy sort of a car, some sort of Toyota Superfast or, or whatever, you know, zippy thing, um, you know, all low and sleek and shiny and, and mags and shiny, you know, lovely and probably went really fast and then they give you a space saver tyre. You know, if I'm spending that much on a car, I want a decent... Anyway, um, and they don't save much space. Goodness sake, who are they kidding? Sorry, I distracted myself. Yes, by denigrating the quality of their spare. Anyway, so I go running past. Everything looks okay, apart from the space saver. Running past, go on my circuit, come running back. They're still there. They're taking their time changing a tyre, but that's okay. And I see them, everything's just about packed back in the car and he's putting the spare back in the car. This doesn't look right, I say to myself because I know what things should look like. There should have been, the end of the story should have been that that stupid looking wheel should have been on the car and the broken one should be put in the boot. And after saying that to myself, I think I'm going to find out what's going on. So I stop and say, how's it going? You, well, are you okay? They said, oh no, um, can't get the jack to work. That turned out to be the problem. So I said, let's have a look. So they displayed to me the problem. They, they got the spare, they got the jack and everything, but he can't put the jack anywhere. There's no spot for the jack. So I have a look at it. There's a little divot. So I feel around underneath. Because of the flat tyre, the, there was that much room between the ground and the under the car bit, and so you couldn't actually see. So I felt around in there. I could feel a notch, you know, there's a little notch in where the things come together and I could see where the jack was supposed to go so I poke the jack in there wind it up it's all set to go and then proceed to undo the wheel nuts another stupid thing on these fancy cars they got these fancy wheel nuts and so you need a special um, adapter to put on there so you can undo the thing Sorry, I shouldn't be whinging about 
people's cars, should I? But anyway, not to worry. We finally found the right thing and changed the tyre. Little lesson to be learnt. You know those, it was one of those tyres that's only about this high, you know, on the edge, you know, and they like such low profile that they got no give. And so they went through a pothole out on Esk Road. The pothole's like, you know, 20 mil deep and it completely destroyed the tyre. So um, that's lesson one. Get proper tyres for your car, right? Not these fancy looking things. They, they look really good but they cost more so you can drive around and people think you're rich because you've got these fancy wheels that are low for hit a bump hit a mouse or something and bang goes your tire anyway that's my little whinge about these tires but put this stupid looking tire on so that they could drive in and get their car repaired that whole time they didn't care what my name was they didn't care that I was a pastor I actually never found that out they, they didn't care what religion I was, how I was educated or anything like that. What they cared about was I could change a tyre. I knew how to use a scissor jack. I knew how to find the proper adapter and undo the thing. I knew that stuff. I knew how to do it. Right? I suspect that this guy was probably a computer whiz but he wasn't, you know, up on how to put a jack in a notch. It was functional. My purpose there, actually, he did say I was an angel, this guy, because he was talking on the phone to someone. He says, oh, there was an angel jogging past. I said, well, probably not. But anyway, um, what was important was that I could change a tyre. See, that was their problem. Their problem was broken car. The answer, the person that I was, was someone who could fix a car. Right? When those two things come together, the need and the one who can fulfill that need, then we have a happy day. Jesus can fulfill a need actually quite a few, but the need that we're talking about today is the greatest need of human beings and that's who he is. He is the one who can fulfil the greatest need that human beings have. It doesn't matter at this point that his name is Jesus. It doesn't matter at this point that he grew up in, uh, that he was born in Bethlehem. It doesn't matter at this point what his history is, what matters is that he can do something very important. What matters is that he is the son of God and he has the answer to the greatest human need which is life and death itself. You see, we all have a problem. We all got this problem and it's a little bit more serious than a flat tyre or driving a car with stupid little wheels. Our greatest problem, the problem that each one of us has, is that this life which we cherish so much is going to come to an end. Okay, Each one of us is going to die. I'm sorry to inject a little bit of a seriousness into the, into the moment. It's a bit harsh, but harsh but true. This life is going to end. Each one of us faces death. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but it will come. And so who Jesus is is suddenly starting to become very important for each one of us. Because we all need to, we all need to have an opinion on this. You see, Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to its full. Jesus has come to overcome death, to interrupt our tragic destiny to put a stop to that and give us a new future, a new destiny. That's what he intends. That sounds like a nice plan, doesn't it? 
that, okay, I'm going to die, so if there's a guy that can come along and help me overcome death, that sounds like a pretty good story. That's what Jesus says about himself. If that's true, I need to know about that. Right? If it was true that I could change a tyre, suddenly that guy that I met on the side of the road was very interested. I was his new best friend. If what Jesus says about himself and what the disciples say about him is true, that changes the course of humankind. Okay? Suddenly, it's changed from all of us are going to die and just get buried and that's going to be the end of it, right? That's changed to we will all die, but there's hope for new life. Oh, well, what is he? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out more about this. I need to know what Jesus says about himself. I need to know what he says about moving from death to life. And he says things like, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He says things like, actually exactly like, um, I go to the Father and I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you can be with me too. That's what he said. Now, if that's true, I need to know about it. Okay, so how do we get there? He says, it's through me. If you recognize me as the Messiah, if you recognize me as my Savior, if you follow me, you will have life. Oh, we need to know about that. You know, so many people say they don't want anything to do with Jesus. And the reason I believe that is, is because they haven't understood who Jesus is. They haven't taken the time to find out what he says about himself, what he says about us and what he's offering us. You know, if you've got someone knocking on the door offering something, sometimes it's really annoying. I had that experience a while ago. You know these people, they keep ringing and, and it rings and, it's, and my phone's really good. It says uh, something like a potential telemarketer. Right. Do you love that when they ring and they say, you know, hello, I have, a, have I got a deal for you kind of thing? Do you, do you like that? Anyone? Yeah. No, I'm not really engaging with anything here, am I? No, it's, it's not our favourite thing. Well, I'd hung up about 48 times on these people and one day, for some reason, I thought, let's find out what they want. Hello. Yeah. And it was something about power bills. I thought, I might just listen to what he's got to say. And so I did and managed to save myself um, about four cents a kilowatt and got about six or eight cents a kilowatt more for my solar. So that was a good day. Sometimes, what pe but I could have kept hanging up on him. I could have, like I did a couple of times, now I've already got power and just... <laughs> You know, we, we want to tell you about your power bills. Yes, I've already got a power bill. Hang up. Um, or am I rude? You think? I, no? Okay. All right. So sometimes, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't keep hanging up on this guy if I wanted to benefit from what he had to offer I couldn't keep hanging up on this guy. I had to make an informed decision. The only way to in make an informed decision was to listen and go th through the whole annoying process of talking on the phone to somebody that I didn't even ask to talk to. Sometimes we just need to take the time to investigate the claims a little bit more closely. This ain't some telemarketer annoying us over a period of a couple of days. 
This is a message that's come to us for thousands of years and that's been accepted by so many people. And so it's worth the time to at least examine the evidence and make up my own mind, who do I say that Jesus is? Because that's the answer to that question everyone needs to. Everyone needs to have an answer to the question of who is Jesus and what is he capable of doing. If you haven't spent a great deal of time examining the claims of Jesus, reading through the stories in the Bible, if you haven't gone through it, if you haven't examined the evidence and come to a decision about who Jesus is, uh, I'm waving my phone about at the moment. That's, I'm trying to uh, say it's a Bible, but actually I've got a Bible here. I can do it properly. Yes, because there's a Bible on my phone. See, that's why I was doing that. If, if we haven't spent the time to open the book and examine what Jesus says about himself and make a decision about that, then we are missing one of the greatest opportunities, well, actually the greatest opportunity that this world has ever had to offer, how to overcome death and how to live life to its full. I don't know if I can put it any clearer, but uh, Jesus offers this today. If you, if you, you know, want to explore that question more, I'd ask that you come and talk with me um, because we have the answer. He's given us the answer. It's the answer to life. It's the answer to everything. He says, I'm here for you. May God bless you. May God open your hearts and give you the wisdom to see who Jesus is, what he has to offer and what he can do for you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen. We're going to sing our next song now. It's, um, it's customary for me to pray for people for their particular needs, so I'm going to do that today. I'm going to offer a time of prayer. I'm going to wander over there in that little corner where there's no one else and we're not on camera or anything. So if you would like me to pray for you for anything in particular, then please come forward and I'll pray for you. But also, if, you, um, if you've got these questions about Jesus and you would like a little bit more from him, if you'd like to make that connection, if you want to experience that, uh, that love of Jesus in your life, which can take you from death to life, then please come too and, uh, and let me bless you.